Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and today I'm going to show you how you can do a picture on your gelatin plate. I'm using the jelly plate that I finally, uh, finally splurged on a couple months ago, and I just love it. I think it's so much fun. All right, so the first thing you need to do is um, make a sketch or get a picture from the internet. You don't have to draw it if you don't want to, and tape it down to your surface, and then make little marks on each piece of tape, and that's going to be a registration guide for you. Then put your gelatin plate either right on top of the drawing or put it on a piece of plexiglass, and then tape that plexiglass down so it doesn't go sliding around. Otherwise, your registration marks are going to do no good if your plate moves. And then what you want to do is, um, is really start painting just like you would normally. So what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of uh, just craft acrylic. This is just, um, you know, cheapo. 75 cents Walmart, baby. And I'm also going to put a little bit of this other uh, darker purple on here. Kind of a berry wine color. And then I am going to brayer them so that I can even out the surface. I'm going to have to wash my brayer good today. Uh, this is actually my third time drying this video and my water pump and heater came on. And I know you guys say you don't mind, you're awful sweet, but it was driving me bananas. I just couldn't even deal. All right, so now I've got a little bit of a mottled background, which is what I want. Set this aside. And then I'm going to press a stencil, which you may remember from the... Um, the orchid painting we did the other day. We used a little stencil in the background. And then I'm just going to grab a scrap of paper and I'm going to pull a print. That's just going to remove some of the excess paint so I have a tone on tone image. And this was what I was originally going to do for the uh, picture, but it was just too many details to uh, complete in a normal amount of time. And you end up with some really cool uh, other prints while you're at it, so uh, you'll want to save those for some other projects. I'm just going to set that aside. And I'm going to put my cardstock down. Now this is important. Uh, try to center up your plate as well as you can. It's nice if you can have a nice border around. That way if it turns out fabulous, you have a little space to sign. And uh, that's always nice. All right, I'm going to press it down. And then I'm going to grab my pen. And look, I'm just making a little mark where each of those um, registration marks are. Now you might want to use a pencil in case you think your pen might bleed through. But I wanted to make sure you could see it. Pull that up, and we have this lovely background. It's very subtle, but um, but I think it's quite nice. And um, I'm actually just going to throw down another scrap of paper just to pull up any residual paint. All right, now the fun starts. Now we're actually going to paint our design. Um, I'm going to do the stem first, and we can actually do the stem and the flower and the same um, on the same layer as long as we're, you know, we don't let our paint run together. And um, make sure that you clean your brush between colors and that if you're going to be um, using a bunch of different brushes, that you actually uh, have a bucket of water handy so you can plop them in there until you're ready to wash them out. Acrylic paint is not going to come out of your brushes. Now, this, uh, we've got a really bold background, and you can see already that my paint's very transparent. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to use some yellow and some green, but I'm actually going to add some white to it to make it transparent. I can always add more layers later. So this is almost like a block out layer kind of. I'm adding some white right in there. I've got a piece of plexiglass over here with a paint on it. So you'll want to you want to do that either a, or a piece of wax paper if you don't want to deal with cleanup later. You put a piece of wax paper down or some some plastic packaging or something. But this is just going to make make it so it's going to block out that purple in the back. And add a little bit, you know, in a tint it green, but I'm going to have to go over it with like a kind of a shadow layer later. That's all right. I just want to make sure that I get some, uh, some greens, but some really opaque color in there right now. Try to um, watch out for big bumps of color. You don't want that because it'll just squish and it may look cool, but it may go completely outside of your design. All right. I'm just going to grab a fresh brush and I'm going to do the same up here, but with yellow and white. Try not to add, I would try not to add too much paint because it's kind of, uh, you don't want the big bumps of gooey paint. Just filling it in, just like you're filling in like a um, coloring book page or the layers, uh, the first layer on a painting or something. So you're probably thinking, well, Lindsay, this is kind of cool, but um, why don't you just paint it? Why, why bother with this? Well, printmaking is an art all on its own. It's worthwhile to explore, and I find a lot of times... When I'm playing like this, having like a creative play day, I may not like what I come up with, but nine times out of ten, I'm going to come up with an idea that I can use somewhere else in my art and craft um, career. So 
this you're building a vocabulary of of art think of it like that you're building your um your crafty vocabulary when you do this and it may not seem like you're really accomplishing much or you're just kind of playing it really does um it really does benefit you because you'll end up coming up with ideas that are kind of outside of the box when you do fun projects like this. I just mixed a little bit of red in there. I just wanted to have a little bit of a, a shadow on these uh, further away leaves. Okay, now we're going to do another print. And um, so I hope I remember what I had for the top and bottom. Yes, I do, because I only put three registration marks. Um, I'm going to line those up, kind of hover it as best I can. Don't worry about it being perfect, because it's not going to be perfect. That's kind of the charm of the whole thing. It's going to be a little bit, a little bit off. But that's kind of, that's kind of fun. All right, let's see what we got here. The suspense is killing me. There we go. We've got our flower and our stem. And then we can go ahead and grab whatever scrap paper we have around. And we can pull off the excess paint. And then, you know, we, we end up making some really cool, um, some really cool patterns like this as well. And it doesn't have to be pristine. You're, you're, you know, going over with the same color. So, you know, don't worry about it. That's kind of cool looking too. I'm going to use that for something for sure. All right. So uh, as I look at my print and I apologize if this takes a long time, but I'm just kind of explaining why I do certain things. I know I want some more dark in the leaves and I'm going to need the center for my flower. So why don't we do those um, aspects now? So we're going to go right in with um, a clean brush and some straight green. It's kind of like a, just a bright Christmassy green. Then add some, some of that green right to our shadows. And the uh, paint on our print that we're working on, we're going back to that same paper every time, but, and you do want to work on cardstock or printmaking paper so it can handle uh, all the, all the thick wet layers of paint, but it dries really quick because it's, it's it actually, each of those layers of paint is pretty thin and it will dry almost instantly. So you don't have to worry about that too much as you're working. And put a little bit of green in the middle there. Alrighty. Now for the um, for the flower, the middle part here, I want to make sure it's going to stand out from my background. So I think I'll do the inside of the flower kind of an orangey color. So it's going to be a little bit different than the one I did um, in my other print because I don't think it stood out quite enough. I want that to be kind of a darker orange. And to make sure that stands out from the uh, from the stock, I'm going to make that, or that part right there, the little trumpet part, I'm going to make that a little bit brighter and lighter of a yellow. Let's we'll see how that looks. And you know, when you're all done doing your print, if you want to enhance it with some, you know, with some marks with your paintbrush or pen, there's no art police out there that's going to stop you. So just, you know, keep that in mind. Art isn't done until you say it's done. It's not over till the creator says it's over, the artist. Okay, so don't worry, there's nothing to worry about. This should be fun, and you should be uh, really kind of stretching your creative muscles there. Now why don't we do a little bit of a highlight on those uh, stem, on the stem while we're at it. A little bit of white, yellow, and green. Just a little, a little bit of it on that leaf anyway. Stem probably doesn't need it, but the leaf does. All right, we'll try this again. Lining up our registration marks. It's probably the most important thing there is just to make sure you set it down Keeping those registration marks lined up because the uh, it's hard to see exactly where the plate is because the plate's smaller than our paper Which it really should be when you're printmaking <clears throat> All right, I'm really liking the way this looks now the next thing I want to do is an outline and yeah You could do this afterwards, but it's kind of fun to see how it comes out when you do it um, all as a print and you can you know you can fuss a little bit later if you want to but do try this as a print because it's I don't know you're going from the, every time you add anything you are um, you're adding it right on top of your clean that up a little bit you're adding it right on top of your original sketch so you're actually keeping your design very pure and it's very um, it just has a, it has a look all of its own so if you ask me why do this instead of just painting just because it has a completely unique look no, I think I'm going to go with a round brush for that. Let's do that. Make sure your brush is dry, though. You do not want to thin down your paint. So let's do our little outline here. We're just going over all of our pen marks that we originally sketched. Or or if you have a picture underneath, um, that's fine. If you have a photograph underneath, you're just kind of going over the lines of that. You could use a digital stamp 
um, you use a coloring book page. A coloring book page would actually be very good to use because they tend to be um, uh, kind of simplified designs and you don't want anything too detailed for this really. It's going to look better if it's a little bit simpler. I'm just kind of, and if you want to add any details here, you can, which is it's kind of fun. I think I'm getting my stem a little too small. I mean, I'm making my lines a little too close together. I should kind of focus a little bit on the outside of my drawing rather than right on the lines, I think. So be aware of that and try to uh, watch out for any blobs. If you have a blob of paint that's going to turn into a dot or a squish when you're all done, it might not be exactly what you're looking for. And I think I might put a little bit of a, of a detail in these petals too. Maybe just like three little, two or three little streaks. Like that. And I think I'll pull that print. Let's see how that looks. I think it's going to look pretty cool. Just going to set that down right there. I know a lot of the... Um, jelly print making video tutorial makers. Uh, they'll speed up the whole process and won't say anything, but I think it's kind of important to see exactly why it works and then um, and then try it. Then you can try it on your own. Okay, I'll show you what I mean about the blob. I got a blob right there. I could touch that up with paint later if I want to, um, but I think I'm really happy with this print. I really like the way it looks. Let me just pull off the paint from that and I'll show you and I'll set my plate aside and I'll show you about adding some touches with um, with paint afterwards if you choose to. So let me just set that aside on the floor. Hopefully I don't step on it. That'd be tragic. All right. And then um, I try not to do too much at this stage because I really like the organic look of the, um, of the print itself, but I can go in and add a little bit of green, green and white, kind of add a little highlight in here, get rid of that paint that doesn't, that kind of squished in. When I remember I said don't put your lines too close together. See that's why that that's why that did that. My lines are too close together and the inks just the paint just blobbed together there. If you want to put just a little highlight, you can do that. But it's not a painting. I wouldn't try to make it look too much like a painting. I would try to keep it um, fresh and printy. I just think it looks pretty cool the way it is. But you know I'd also want to show you this in case you decide you want. You just it's it's too raw for you. You can refine it a little bit. You can add in a little bit of highlight to the tips of the petals. I just think it's so fun. Wouldn't this be cute in a frame? It just, I mean, and it's eight and a half by 11, so it's so easy to find an inexpensive frame at that price. Wouldn't it be cute to just, you know, frame that up and put it in the laundry room or the kid's bedroom or I just think it's it's so cheerful it's so springy where we've got like five days of rain in the forecast starting Saturday and you know you need all you need all the spring we can get I think so I'm doing a little bit of yellow white and green on my palette my palette's off camera a little bit so let me see actually I might be able to slide that right in there yeah you can see that can't you um we'll put a little a few little stamens in the middle and then a few little of the uh, polleny bits on the top. I'm so bad with uh, names of planty names, names of plant things. But there you have it. And of course you'll want to sign your name, but typically what you do when you sign your name on prints is you would write it down here in the margin and not on the print yourself. You could write it right with your, um, right with a pencil even, or a pen, it's completely up to you. Uh, so there you have it, a fun uh, mono print done with your gelatin plate. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. If you like this video, please check out the other gelatin printmaking videos I have, including on how to make your very own gelatin plate, which is totally fun and really, really cheap too. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.